Hey everybody, PC Outcast here, back with more Everlasting Summer. We ran, ran with the last of our strength, like those who run for their precious lives, like a doomed person knowing that there is no hope to save his life, will still fight the inevitable and his own fate. I merely managed to close the heavy metal door behind me. What the hell? I have no idea how deep this bomb shelter is, or if it's able to withstand a nuclear blast, but we have no other place to hide. She gripped my hand tight. Don't be afraid. Bits of the ceiling were falling and walls were shaking. I was prepared for the worst, but death is the kind of thing that you can't ever be prepared for. But suddenly, complete silence fell and rang even louder than the explosions. Eh? Maybe it's time to say goodbye. She was whimpering. I wanted to comfort her somehow, but realized that there was nothing I could do. Yes. Eh. You know, I... A horrible bang almost split my eardrums. It seems that I'm under a piece of collapsed ceiling that I don't feel any pain. Oh, but I don't feel any pain. All I want is to not let her go. Okay, so that was his dream. I woke up in a cold sweat, short of breath and gasping for air. It took me some time to come to my senses. It was a dream. It was just a dream. My questioning mind, however, refused to believe it. But who was that girl with me there? I didn't want to let go of her hand so desperately. Sadly, I couldn't recall her at all. The clocks... The clock was showing a few minutes past ten. Slowly came to my senses as reality started to stake out its claim on my mind, and my stomach foully growled. All right, war is war, but lunch should be served in due time. Turned out that Olga wasn't here. She must have decided not to wake me up. Well, thanks go out to our camp leader for this. After yesterday's adventures, I had to have a rest. Last night was remained... A blurry memory, which I really didn't want to think about. It's now more important to find something to eat and to wash myself. Exactly. Because a pioneer must always be clean and tidy. Though I would agree with this principle even if I wasn't a pioneer. And as a matter of fact, I'm not. On my way to the wash stand, I met Electronic. He started to wave his hands and run up to me. Good morning. Thank you for finding Shurik. Without him, I don't even... It's nothing. I was a bit embarrassed. No, really, don't be so shy. The country must be proud of its heroes. What about Shurik? How did he look this morning? Is he alright? After yesterday's craziness, I thought such a question was completely valid. Yes, absolutely. The only thing is that he can't remember anything. Can't he? I wasn't surprised at all. He says that he went to the abandoned camp yesterday and then woke up in his bed in the morning. I mean, he remembers nothing between those two events. I see. All right, then. You missed breakfast, right? Come to our club. We'll feed you. I have something special. Electronique smiled in a conspiratorial way. Thanks. I'll come by. Probably. I had to wash myself first, anyway. We'll be waiting. He waved at me and left to carry out his own business. There's nobody near the washstands. The water turned out surprisingly warm today. It's been warmed up by already, I guess. Having my face washed, I realized that it wouldn't be so easy to wash the rest of my body here. Maybe I should go to the showers. But since there's nobody here, I turned the tap in such a way so water streamed uh, parallel to the ground and started to take off my clothes. What if somebody sees me? Well, I'll rinse and dry myself quickly and put on my clothes. Water, which seemed warm on my hands and face, felt bone-chillingly cold on my body. The whole washing process took no longer than ten seconds, and I started to wipe myself quickly afterwards. But I didn't manage to finish anyway. There were forces coming in from the direction of the footpath. The only solution came to me in a split second. I grabbed my clothes and dashed into the bushes. A moment later, Alyssa and Yolana appeared near the washstands. You could have done it by yourself. Why did you bring me here? Is it a big deal for you? Fine, let me... I peered at them and noticed that they were both covered in red paint. What a surprise. I wonder how they managed that. Alyssa opened the valve and started to rub Yolanda's back. 
Take off your bra. What if somebody sees us? What? Is there anything to see? She grinned. Okay, just be quick. It's true that there wasn't much to look at, but even so, I stared at the girls narrowly. It was a pity that they were standing with their backs to me. You dirty little bastard. A minute later, Alyssa managed to wash off all the paint. I'm done. Thanks. You're welcome. Alyssa replied lazily. Listen, let me try on yours. She pointed at, Aly at Alyssa's bra. It won't fit you for sure. Well, I'd like to try anyway. But out here? It's probably, there's nobody here, right? Yolanda looked my way and smiled arc... arc... Arkly? Archly? Looked my way, and so she knows. I was absolutely sure she couldn't see me in the bush, these bushes, but... Enough with this nonsense. Yolanda wasn't listening to her anymore and grabbed Alyssa's bra with a dexterous move instead. Now I have to confess, I had something to look at. I watched the two girls chase one another around the washstands with bated breath. Alyssa covered her breasts with her hands so I could barely see anything at all. I leaned forward and stumbled over a stone, falling out of the bushes. <laughs> Whoops! Alyssa and Yolanda fro stood frozen, staring at me. I tried to cover my nudity with my guilty face. <laughs> the tableau? 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 Lasted for a few seconds. Then Alyssa took her shirt and somehow put it on in an instant. You. You. Her face gone from red to purple. It looked like she would explode in a nuclear nuclear blast any second. The only thing I wanted to, wanted was to disintegrate into atoms and get as far from the epicenter as possible. He was sitting there the whole time. So he noticed me then. Oh, wait. What was that? She noticed me. There you go. You. You. Well, she knew I was there. She smiled. And I... Well, I accidentally... If you know what I mean... Alyssa rushed at me. Covering my butt with one hand and holding my clothes with the other, I ran into the woods. It seemed the best solution to me at the time, as showing up naked in the middle of camp accompanied by two screaming girls wasn't a good idea. <laughs> I ran without looking back and stopped a few minutes later to catch my breath. It seemed that there was no pursuit. So I managed to save myself. But at the cost of lacerated scratch and bleeding feet, as I had no time to put on my boots. Sat on a tree stump and sighed. Sometime later, having dressed already, I left the forest. I needed to decide what to do next. My feet are hurting, so I should go straight to the infirmary. But on the other hand, my stomach isn't going to wait either. Maybe I should accept Electronique's invitation. Or head to the canteen in the hope of find finding something left to eat there? That's idiotic. I mean, come on. You're hungry, but surely you can go and get your feet fixed up first. Come on. Infirmary. I was always... I, I, I was always took good care of my health. Mm -hmm. And even better care at the times when something starts to hurt badly. So without hesitation, I made my way to the infirmary. But right in front of the door, I stopped as if some mysterious force was holding me. I had absolutely no desire to face the camp nurse without any urgent need, but on the other hand, I almost did a great deed yesterday, defending the infirmary. So in some sense, she owed me. I took heart and opened the door. Hi, Pioneer. Hello. I'm sorry that I was so late yesterday. It wasn't a problem at all. Why have you come? Are you sick? She smiled slyly. Well, I'm... I got my feet a bit... You got a bit... what? My feet. I have a stupid an I gave a stupid answer. Okay, show me. I sat on the couch and took off my boots. How did you manage that? I better keep silent about what happened near the washstands. Well, I... Okay, never mind. Wait a second. He rummaged in the drawer and took out a big red pill with a cross-shaped notch from a vial. What is that for? I was disturbed by the size of the pill and its strange shape. They're broken in halves, usually, and not in quarters. This is to make the amputation of your legs unnecessary. What? Oh, my. Nothing. Don't be afraid. Pioneer. You'll take it, and it will be all right. And this pill? Why does it look like that? That's for patients who refuse to take medicines 
per orally per per orally we screw it into them with a screwdriver then good grief i didn't dare ask where they were being screwed in actual uh, actually and now try to bear it a bit now try to bear it a bit what the writing is getting terrible she took a big pack of cotton wool wrapped a bud with it and applied plenty of iodine to it i braced myself for the torments of hell I I moaned quietly, but my trust in this method of disinfection was much higher than in the odd pill, so I had to withstand the burning. Now it's done. I put on my boots and tried to walk. My feet were still hurting, but the sharp pain was gone. Thank you. Don't mention it. Drop in any time, Pioneer. So sad that she doesn't have a root. Oh. I said goodbye and left the infirmary. My health problem was solved. It's the right time to eat now. The day has just started and I've gone through so many things already. But I did it and now have legitimate grounds to fill myself up. Today I wasn't the last one so I could choose a free table. Lunch included pea soup and mashed potatoes with fish. A major disappointment to me as I don't eat fish in any form and hence will get fewer, ca fewer cal calories than usual. Uh, soon Slavia and Lena came to my table. And we? She smiled nicely. Eh? Yes, sure. I stood up and pulled out a chair for her. Please. I was in an excellent mood at that moment. Enjoy your meal. Saying that, Lena began staring at me and continued for some time, but then, after realizing how odd she looked, Switch to her plate. You too. You have any plans for today, Semyon? Nope. I gave her an honest answer, as indeed I had no plans, except for searching for answers, but that was more like a global goal. Do you want to take a boat ride in the, to the island with us? The island? Well, I think I've seen it from the pier. For what? Olga asked us to gather some strawberries. There's a lot of strawberries there, and they're so delicious. I can imagine the taste without even eating it, just by looking at Slavia's face. Strawberries? And what are those for? I don't know, but it's indeed a great idea. Well, indeed it is. Moreover, I haven't been to the island yet. Yeah, sure. Hmm. Within minutes, we were already standing at the pier. Well, here's the boat. Hang on, I'll go and fetch the paddles now. I was left face to face with Lena. Do you like strawberries? Well, not really. But they're tasty. Lena smiled. I see. I didn't know what to say next. How to continue the conversation. If Slavia didn't come back, we could probably sit here till the evening without saying a word. Here you go. She handed me a pair of hefty paddles. Yeah, thanks. I'll just do all the work. Oh, look at Lena. She's so shy. We got into the boat. I untied it, pushed off the shore, and tried to start paddling. And where exactly are we heading to? Right there. She pointed her finger at the island. That island is named the closest one. <laughs> I wonder what ca captain gave it such an original name. Well, the island is indeed close to shore. Aye, aye, captain. Only I had known what was waiting for me ahead. I wasn't an experienced oars oarsman. I had rowed a boat just once or twice in my entire life. It was less than half a mile to the island, but we were making our way in zigzags thanks to my skills. By approximately the middle of the trip, my arms hurt so badly that I dropped the paddles to get some rest. Well, aren't there any strawberries anywhere else? I mean, in more accessible places? The tasty ones, tastiest ones grow there. Slavia gave me a puzzled look. Is it hard for you to row alone? Lena, unlike Slavia, understood everything straight away. Oh, it's nothing. Anyway, I couldn't let a fragile girl help me. The rest of the way I spent, con spent concentrating on staying alive while getting to the island. Slavia and Le Lena uh, discussed something, but I wasn't listening. That was too much for me. At last we arrived. Oh, you're really not, they're really not far away. Completely exhausted, I got out on shore and looked at the boathouse. It seemed so far away that I felt like a first person, like 
a first person on the moon watching the earth rise. Here you go. Flabby handed me a basket. It was a small island, barely 100 meters long. And it looked more like a birch grove with even rows of trees covering its entire surface. A calm green sea spread beneath our feet with wind uh, causing lonely waves on its surface from time to time. This island looked like, looked like a lost paradise. No wonder that the most delicious strawberries grow just here. Gotta split up. That will do a faster job. Or do the job faster. Yeah, sure. But there are only two baskets, said Lena humbly. Oh, you're right. My bad. So how are we gonna split up then? Well, obviously I'm gonna go with Lena, the psychopath. Everybody's psycho. Let me go with you. Let's go. Okay, that's fine. Slavy grabbed the second basket and ventured to the opposite side of the island. Well? Well. Let's go? Yeah. Lena smiled. Just pay attention. Don't leave a single berry behind. You too. Eh. So it was harvest time. Indeed, the strawberries were here were delicious. I could probably eat them all if I didn't stop myself in time. Despite being wild grown, the berries were close to garden ones in size and had a rich red color, so it was near it was clear that our visit here wasn't in vain. Nina followed me closely as we had only one one basket for the both of us. Felt like a real mushroom picker, examining each shrub and carefully pawing the grass. Well, you're much better than me, am I? Frankly, I'm not even counting them. Yeah, right you are. The basket was already half full. You must enjoy nature, right? I do. The bright sun rays pierced the treetops and blinded me for a second. I sat down on the ground and leaned against a tree. It Still, it's so beautiful here. Lena sat down next to me. So close that her elbows touched. Yeah. We just sat and enjoyed the moment. It seemed like time stood still. The wind gently shook the tree leaves, and bugs lazily hopped around the grass, and splashes of sunlight played on the faraway water surface. Lena put her head on my shoulder. I was surprised at first, but then I heard her regular breathing and thought that it was just a matter of course. Probably she felt drowsy and wanted to take a quick nap. I just sat there and didn't think, any th think of anything for a few minutes. But then words started crossing my mind with ultrasonic speed. Lena. So close. Sleeping. So warm. So gentle. Feelings. Don't be a creeper, dude. I gazed at her. She had such a serene, such a tranquil look on her face that it seemed that right now she's not here, but in some kind of better world. I don't know what would have happened the next moment if I didn't hear the voice of Slavia. Damien, Lena! I shook my head from side to side a few times to come to my senses. Lena started to wake up. She opened her eyes and gave me an empty look. Have a nice dream? Huh? Suddenly realizing that she dozed off, leaning on my shoulder, Lena blushed. Oh, I'm sorry. It's fine. Flavi came over to us, so Lena rushed to get up. So, how much have you got? I sighed. That's not a lot. Her basket was filled with strawberries to the brim. Well, it's enough. Anyway, it's time to get back. I grabbed the basket and we headed back to the boat. The way back took less time as I tried to concentrate on rowing and ignoring everything else. My only wish was to get back alive as the first trip hadn't gone without consequences and now my hands started to hurt after only a few sweeps of the oars. Having tied up the boat, I fell to the ground with no energy left. Flavia and Lena le leaned over me. You could have said something if it was so hard for you. Yes. Never mind. It's fine. I'll just lie here for a bit and everything will be alright. Okay. Then get those baskets to Olga, please. We have something else to do. Yeah, sure. I was ready to agree with anything at that moment, just so I wouldn't have to get up. Slavia put the baskets full of strawberries next to me and headed to the square, happily chatting with Lena about something. The hardest part is done, anyway. That's what I thought before I got up and took the baskets. After the rowing, they felt like cement bags, even while weighing barely more than a few kilos kilograms each. 
So the trip to the camp leader's cabin took much longer than usual. I had to stop every 50 meters to have a rest. Once I finally made it, I put the baskets on the ground and sat on the deck chair with difficulty. Olga! Olga, I've got presents for you. There was no answer. I barely managed to get up and enter the cabin. There's nobody there. If you don't need them, it's up to you. I lay down in the deck chair and fell asleep. <laughs> oh my. I had a weird dream about a strawberry race. I was rowing a boat with my last ounces of strength, trying to escape huge berries that were chasing me. My hands were failing me, and I could barely see anything because of the sweat covering my face. Blood was hammering in my temples, but the strawberries were getting closer. They were baring their teeth at me. But wait. Strawberries with teeth? Semyon! Semyon! I woke up. Olga was standing beside me, shaking my shoulder. I see you got a rich harvest, didn't you? Uh, thanks to the girl's help. Okay, but that's not all. Seriously, I was just anticipating a lovely rest I was about to have. Do you even know what these strawberries are for? Not a clue. What an honest confession. We'll make a cake out of them. I see. Well, that makes sense. To honor the miraculous rescue of Shirk. And it's all thanks to you. It was clear that getting the strawberries wasn't the last thing left to do. And why, please tell me, if I'm such a hero, why do I have to organize a celebration in my name all by myself? Well, I guess. So, I have an important task for you. We're missing yeast, flour, and sugar. And need it all in the canteen before dinner. And those who will make the cake can't deal with it on their own somehow? I asked pitifully. Of course they can't. All of them are busy. And you're the only one in the coal camp who does nothing. While her words were partially true, partly true, that doesn't make it any easier for me now. Moreover, those words felt like a bullet to my head. So write it down. You'll get yeast in the infirmary, flour in the library, and sugar in the clubhouse. Why is there flour in the library? Wait, wait, uh... I have no time, I'm in a hurry. Good luck! She smiled slyly and left. Of course, there are a lot of strange things in this camp, but yeast in the infirmary? Okay, yeah, that doesn't make any sense either. Okay, I can deal with that. But flour in the library? And sugar? No, it's way beyond my comprehension. I spat on the door. On the floor. I don't want to, and I will not believe this. P tell me. Just tell me you're pulling my leg. I'd not be surprised if a crowd of fat green trolls would appear r here right now beside me and with every one of them feeling ob obligated to laugh at me. So maybe to hell with this cake? I weighed my options for some time. No, if such a major plan of Olga's fell through, I'd be in for a world of hurt. And it would complicate both my life in the camp and my search for answers, which I've stopped for quite a while. Seems I have no choice. Good grief. Good grief, man. Okay, infirmary, I guess. Go get the yeast. Let's just do it in order. I feel like I visited the infirmary too often recently. But what can I do? That's how things pan out. I sighed and knocked on the door. Come in. The nurse said with a trace of sing-song accent. Good afternoon. Olga sent me to get some... I hesitated slightly. Yeast. Ah, sure. She gave me a broad smile. It's just that I don't have any. Pioneer. How so? She said that... Well, I had some, but now there's none left. I didn't even bother asking why she had it in the first place. Well, don't you worry. You can have some aspirin, for example. That could be of some use to me, actually. Where do I get it, then? I said, take this. She opened the drawer and pulled out some kind of bottle. Took a closer look. Uh, okay, whatever I... Austin Kinsko is a well-known bra brand of cheap beer in the USSR. Took a closer look. It was beer. Eh? What's the matter? Oh, of course, the beer has, uh, has yeast in it. Beer is also a fermented product. She gave me a deep gaze. 
Nobody will even notice. She had a point, but everything just looked so grotesque to me that I couldn't find anything to say. Are you sure? Absolutely. Okay, then. The bottle clearly wouldn't fit in my pocket of in the pocket of my shorts. Well, thanks. I mumbled shyly, leaving the infirmary. Well, beer certainly can could produce reproduce or replace yeast. Even my limited knowledge of chemistry and biology was enough to accept this. But generally walking around with this bottle in my hands looked like a silly idea to me, so I decided to bring it to Olga's cabin and hide it there. But I had to reach it somehow without anybody noticing the beer. I hid the bottle under my shirt. <laughs> that sounds idiotic. And everything would have been fine, but Slavia called me out at the square. Actually, she sprang out from behind me so suddenly that I even had gave a start. How's it going? What exactly? Your search for ingredients. Ah, so you know already. Yes, I do. Slavia smiled. Going all right, I answered, trying not to give away my unrest. And what do you have there? She pointed to the bottle sticking out from under my shirt. Ah, this. She got me. Uh, it's nothing. I blushed with a silly giggle. It's time to go. <laughs> I was almost running, leaving the square with a puzzled Slavi behind. It's great that she is one of those people who don't un ask unnecessary questions. But there are people in this camp who like nothing better than to poke their noses in other people's businesses. Passing the Pioneer's cabins, I stumbled upon Yolana. Uh-oh. What are you hiding there? She gave me one of her cheeky looks. I thought there was no point in denying anything, so I replied in a provocative manner. It's none of your business. I'm a cipher officer bearing a message to headquarters. That's certainly a big message. I was carrying the bottle at waist height, so I was slightly embarrassed. <clears throat> you want some help? I'll deal with it on my own. I walked past her confidently and proceeded on my way. To my surprise, she didn't say anything or try to pursue me. There's nobody at Olga's cabin, so I successfully managed to stuff the bottle under my bed. <laughs> so idiotic. Once I got outside, I sighed with relief. Really, I couldn't believe that I would ever worry that such, that much about a single bottle of beer. Like I was back in high school. It's a good thing it's safe now. Even if somebody finds it, I'll claim it's not mine. I could always think of think up a suitable excuse for my enormous experience. Oh, good grief. Alright, so... Yeah, flower in the library. This is the most idiotic... adventure. If every other place on the cake ingredient list made at least some sense to me, then flower from the library made none. I thought hard about who would put it in the library and why, but couldn't find any sane explanation after all. Given Zenya's harsh nature, I'd better knock first. Open. Zenya peered at me closely from behind her glasses. What do you want? Um, don't think anything weird, but I need... I didn't want to look like an idiot and decided to explain things carefully. I need some flour. Olga said that it's here. I understand that it sounds strange to keep flour in the library, but... I was sent to you, and it's needed for a cake to celebrate Shurik's rescue. Yes, I have the flower. What's so strange about that? Then you replied with surprise. That second, I felt like I'd been hit on the head with a heavy weight and lost the ability to understand anything at all. Flower in the library. Sure. What's so strange about it? We're in Wonderland. I'm Alice. Now I'm getting going to eat that magic mushroom, and I'll be back home. Hey. Uh, yeah? I was daydreaming. Wait here, I'll be right back. She disappeared behind the bookshelves while I folded my hands and started waiting. A moment later, the sound of a trap door groaning on its hinges reached me. Hey, you need some help? I inquired loudly. I'll deal with it. Zenya barked out at me. She seems to be in the basement, so I'll have to wait a little. Okie dokie. A few minutes passed, but Xenia still hadn't returned. I was starting to get worried when the door was suddenly flung open and Alyssa came into the library. She looked surprised, too, seeing me here. What are you doing here? I'm not allowed to be here? I said rudely to her. Alyssa was 
clearly a bit overwhelmed. Ah, what do I care? She snorted and headed to Xenia's table. And why are you here, then? Melissa measured me with her eyes carefully and almost opened the mouth to say something, but then seemed to change her mind and turned away, hiding her hands behind her back. Returning a book? I blurted the first thing off the top of my head. It's none of your business. She replied with a hint of hesitation. What book is it? Alyssa was silent. Oh, come on, let me see it. I wonder what Miss High Voltage Keep Away reads. It's none of your business. Her voice was even less confident. Okay, okay, I don't insist or anything. In fact, I was quite interested to find out what Alyssa was reading. Moreover, I was quite amused to see the, the book in her hands. TV, movies, or a computer? If one were available here, all these things seem to be much more appropriate entertainment for a girl like her. But she had a book instead. Try to snatch it out of her hands. Yeah, let's do that. My curiosity won. I struck at the right moment when Alyssa was looking away from me and snatched the book. Ouch! She screamed. In the following second, her face took on such an expression that made me question my decision. <laughs> I'm about to die, at least I'll know what for. I held a copy of Gone with the Wind in my hands. That was the same book that Lena was reading that evening on the bench. I was so astonished that I completely forgot about my imminent death. Is it interesting? Yeah. Alyssa answered without any enthusiasm, blushing. Okay then. I handed the book back to her. Alyssa threw it on the table and left the library quickly without looking at me. <laughs> so human things aren't alien to her. In the end, she too is a girl. After a quick review of everything that just happened, I concluded that there was actually nothing that strange. Finally, Xenia's deep groan rang out, reaching each and every corner of the library. Grab it! I passed by the bookshelves and beheld the per perspiring librarian sitting near the trap door leading into the basement with a small sack next to her. Well, they might have some sort of storehouse down there. Thanks. I took the sack and left the library. That is bizarre. Thank goodness it wasn't too heavy, so I carried it down to Olga's cabin without too much effort. Okay, finally the clubhouse. So, oh. Okay. I didn't realize the clubhouse is on both sides of the street. Thing. Feels like I've gone through more things today than all the previous days combined. Thus approaching the clubhouse, I had even forgotten to think about how awkward it must be to look for sugar there. Sure, why not? Whoa. We're making a cat robot girl. Shark and Electronique were enthusiastically building something. They were so busy that they didn't even notice me. I looked closely. Some kind of robot, or at least the body of one. Moreover, this robot was female and had animal ears. I didn't want to make up theories about purpose of such a device for l luminaries of camp cybernetics. Even though the design looked practically workable, I had my doubts about this robot ever being able to conquer Earth, or at least being able to do anything on its own. But they seemed to be enjoying the process more than the end result itself. And that was something we shared, even though I didn't want to admit it. On the other hand, they weren't afraid of possible failure, criticism, or jokes. They were working towards their goal without paying attention to others. Who would call it unrealistic or even absurd? Now it looks like I'm truly comparing... I'm truly comparing them to luminaries of the sciences. Hey guys! I greeted them uncertainly. Oh, Simeon, come in. We're always glad to see you. I was actually already inside. You know, sorry for what happened yesterday. I barely remember anything, but, well, never mind. It's okay. What brings you to our humble abode? Electronique looked at me slyly. Sometimes I feel that he makes such a face when he knows something about the other person, something he can use in a right moment. Sugar. I need sugar. An image from an ancient video game suddenly came into my mind, where some kind of unit, like a builder or something, cried out with all of its five pixel stature. Gold! We need more gold! We got it, said Ele Electronic calmly. Why would you want it? I felt that I shouldn't explain to Shurik that they wanted to bake a cake for him. 
I shouldn't spoil the surprise. I don't know. Olga told me to get some. Okay, hang on. Electronique disappeared behind the door into the next room. And why do you have sugar here? Why not in the canteen? When the food truck came last time, it was the last thing to unload. And given that her building is the closest one to the entrance, they decided to leave it here to save some effort. <laughs> That's reasonable, isn't it? The door opened, revealing Electronique uh, hauling a huge bag behind him. I really don't know what the size of the cake will be, but that was obviously too much sugar. Well, thanks, but I don't need it all. But where would we put it? Electronique gave me a surprised look. We don't have a place for it. You ask for sugar, so take it. Seems that that previous smile of his, of his wasn't there without reason. Maybe you'll help me then? It's not that far to carry. We're busy. He pointed his hand at the robot. I gazed at Chirik. He owed me, after all. He hesitated and then looked away in shame. I sighed, took the bag, and headed to the door. Thanks anyway, I said at parting, exerting myself. But I didn't make it too far. Just after a mere 20 meters, I had to put the bag down to have a rest. I had no idea how much it weighed, but it felt like more than 20 kilos. On the one hand, it was just 200 meters to the canteen. On the other hand, even such a distance with this payload on my shoulder, or alternately in my hands, or on my legs, or under my arm, or even on my head, looked impossible for me to cover. And as I resigned myself to move in minor spurts, minor sprints, with prolonged pauses between them so I could get there by night at least, I heard a voice behind me. Maybe I could help you? I saw Lena in front of me. I don't think you can. It was one of those moments when I felt painfully how dramatically I was out of shape. I can bring a handcart. A handcart? Why didn't I think of that myself? Yes, that would be great. Wait here, I'll be right back. She smiled and ran in the direction of the square. What would I do without her? Good that Lena isn't always that shy and can take the initiative sometimes. I started to think. She seemed quite unusual now, with no trace of shyness on her face and actually the opposite, the complete opposite, smiles and confidence. The offer of help wasn't something extraordinary by itself, but getting it from Lena... A few minutes later, she came back with a smallish handcart, put the bag on it. Thanks. Don't mention it. She blushed and looked down. Ah, the Lena we all know is back. So I'll go then. Yes, see you, and thank you again. I shouted after her. Sometimes I felt like there were two different people living inside of Lena. But the second one, confident and happy and sometimes even bold, only appears when she talks to me. Or am I making things up again? I thought that it would be better if I get all the ingredients at once, so I headed to Olga's cabin with the handcart. Finally, it seems that everything had been collected. Took the handcart with sugar outside and put the sack with the flour on it, followed by the two baskets of strawberries that somehow fitted in, be in between, and the beer was hidden under my shirt, just in case. The day was coming to its end, so I had to hurry, as cake itself will need some time to bake. Of course, I'd rather enjoy laying down, closing my eyes, and getting a decent sleep, but I just couldn't let Olga down. Indeed, after all the trouble I'd gone to, I even felt personally responsible for the success of this event. Coming to the square, I stopped for a moment to catch my breath. It wasn't that the cart was that heavy. It ran smoothly without any noticeable effort required. It was just that my any physical exertion caused pain to me now, both a physical and a mental one. Blech. Okay, apparently I'm going to fall asleep, so we'll pick up next time. Thank you very much for watching. See you then.